cloth clearly a very important part of tailoring um, in the trade tailors like ourselves use about five cloth merchants there might be six if we sit and count them all people think it comes straight from mills and it does on occasions but generally it's from a merchant's so what we're going to do is um, we're going to jump in the red main van and head southwest to one of my favorite companies who I've been dealing with for a very long time. There is all those red main. Um, to my mind, I always call them LBD, Leah Brown and Dunsford. And we're going to see the chap that runs the place called Mark Dunsford. They now commercially have changed their name to Harrisons of Edinburgh. They have a brilliant portfolio of cloths and I think you'll be really interested in it. And we'll head off down to the West Country, Exeter, and uh, we'll have a look at what they've got to offer and I think you'll be very impressed. Welcome to Exeter. It's raining. It's just like Cumbria, but a bit further south. LBD House. You're going to enjoy this. Mark, how are you? Happy Christmas. Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming down. Nice weather for you, like Cumbria weather. It certainly weather. is, it yeah. certainly is. You've always enjoyed the videos that we've done about cloth. So this is like a super video, uh, very kindly invited over the Christmas period. That's why the tree is here. And we're gonna go through a lot of their fantastic brands that they supply. And as you know, a lot of them are my favorites. We're gonna have a good look around and uh, this Got is gonna be absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, these so are the guys. These are two good looking people to be possibly related to you. Mr. Lear. Mr. Mr. Brown and the lightness there, see the lightness there? Dunsford, <laughs> Arthur Dunsford. Ah, right. It is Sheriff's regaler, he was Sheriff of Exeter. I mean, that's brilliant. I mean, yeah. Leah Brown and Dunsford, that's yeah. LBD, it just kind of trips off the tongue, that's and I've never yeah. thought. Fabulous. Isn't so it? I'm fourth generation. Obviously, my son's now in it, he's fifth with yeah, my, Jamie, my, of and course. Then Jamie, and then there's uh, William, who's James's son. It's, it's a good team. And yeah. uh, you know, we've, got, we've got some lovely customers, and it's a family business, you know. And if you've got any problems, you're going to end up always speaking to me eventually. Yeah, no, it's a rare quality these days. Yeah. Fantastic. Personal touch is key. Yeah, so obviously, this is the hope of many, many brands. Obviously, I've known you for a good number of years. Quite a few, um, quite a few. Similar sort of ages. I'm probably you know a bit, a bit of looking in you sometimes at certain angles, but generally you know uh, it's been a good thirty or plus years, hasn't it? I think it has. Since, yeah, uh, I knew you were always Leah Brown and Dunsford very much to me so. very much when so. I was an apprentice at Red And we were at the time as very much so. Yeah. Yep. And and I remember coming here as a, an apprentice. Michael very kindly brought us down, but you were saying that would be the old place in the we town. We have been here for nearly 24 years. It's a fairly more as purpose built unit. Yeah, which is probably uh, better. Because the cloth it? needs to be kept at certain temperatures. Other places are a little bit leaky. Yeah, and that's and, uh, what my memory of it yeah. was. It was yeah. very much the old creaky yeah, kind of building, it was, but it was. quaint. Underfloor right. heating here, keep the nice temperature, because there's some valuable stuff in this place. Yeah. And some nice fabric. So I dealt with you then as yeah. an apprentice and you were always a very big name and and then it well it was small I mean more a provincial name in those days um, it wasn't really until we bought a company you probably never heard of possibly but Pedersen and Becker yeah Pedersen and Becker I know which it was because a I know the product which was a 15 ounce bulletproof navy blue navy blue navy blue grey 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 yeah. bunch is that, that universal now it's now universal yeah but that was a big key turning point in my career in this in this business because that was a cloth that the City of London wore as a uniform to work. Right, nice, proper stuff. And it coincided with another chap joining our company who worked in London, and that transformed overnight. We were taking lengths for 15, 20 orders every right. other day. It's incredible, it was incredible, isn't it? So I think it was when I first bumped into you when heading up north, I was spreading the Pedersen Becker love right. across the country. Um, About 30 years ago. Yeah, uh, because those days, those weights were quite, let's say, normal. 
they were more uh, prevalent, more than they are today, possibly. Hence the reason why there's only well, one bunch Well, I there. always say to everybody, the heavier the better, all right? In an yeah. ideal world. That was quite heavy, though. 15 is quite heavy. We, we feel like we make light clothing. Yeah. And the heavier cloths are just lovely. They're substantial. Yeah. And I always sure. say part of the reason is, I probably got the numbers wrong, but when you're getting bespoke, certainly, you're paying mm. for three, 400-year-old technology. Sure. Somebody sewing yeah. away. Yeah. And three, 400-year-old technology was not designed for an eight-ounce Super 180s no. woven in Italy, was it? No, no, sure. It's, it, it wasn't. I mean, probably our, our USP is morally, you know, we're a sort of British company buying British cloth making cloth for mm. customers who are tailoring it. Our market isn't the, the, the big market in the world is the 280 gram and below. Right, We're yeah, of at course. 300 and above, which is a bit unusual. Interesting uh, point. Because that makes us a little bit more niche. We're not in a, we're in a sort of a, a big fish in a smaller pond. Yeah. Whereas the other guys are in a much bigger pond, all the Italian manufacturers. Yeah all doing very very huge but amounts of lightweight fabrics we don't really we, we <coughs> that's not our specialty yeah well the thing is all these things are relative right so people turn around to me and they say you know what tom um you know how do you survive right yeah. how do you survive you're up there in cumberland you have your place in london sure how do you survive and i because they'll say nobody wears suits anymore i'll say well actually they do and just look at it like this which is mm. kind of a bit like your niche mm. thing is there 95% less suit wearers than there was 50, 60 years mm. ago? Probably the answer is yes. Yeah. But there is 99.9% .9 less bespoke tailors sure. properly sure. that can do the real yeah, deal. Of course. So it's all kind of relative. So we all have our places and that's why we're yeah. busy. And I guess that's the same for you. When you produce really something special, mm. um, it's for a limited market, but you're a very mm. limited resource. Yeah, and and there's still a lot of customer tailors <coughs> in other parts of the world. I mean, Italy's renowned for great tailoring, but unfortunately their tailors are not coming into the trade like they are in the UK. Mm. So there's a, there's a possible uh, trouble there down the road five, ten years' time. Do you know at Red Mains, and especially me with my big mouth, because I mm. always cause problems, but... Yeah. I prefer British cloths. In fact, it's woven and made in the UK. You know, makes me feel very proud and, mm. and is not a great do, thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there is, there's a lot of love for Italian fabrics. They do uh, interesting designs in lighter weights, really yeah. interesting yeah. designs in lighter weights. But I'm not that much of a fan. Now, some of this might just be my own prejudice. Mm. Now, this is why I'm putting you on the spot. Is, what, do, what do you think of Italian cloth mm. versus British cloth? Is there a difference in absolutely, the make? Absolutely, absolutely a difference. I mean, the thing is, the biggest thing is, is the colours. The quality, obviously, is always going to be lighter than the yeah. British cloth. Slightly less constructed in some places, but not necessarily all the time. There's, you know, there's one or two firms that we work with. We also work with a firm called Drappers of Italy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because the well-engineered British fabric is so different sometimes to the Italian, which is light and weight. Yeah. It, it does make it you, know, you can tell the difference between the two and that gives us a, so another part of our sort of usp is it's like well you can have italian it's, it's fantastic flair lovely colors which we can't compete on colors yeah. that they have well i think that's a very valid point because i people will show us especially when we travel yeah. in the us right yeah. and, and i had a classic example of it of a chap we met in atlanta yeah. and he, he picked up some images off instagram and he sure. said I'd really like something like this. And what he was showing me looked great. Yep. And I totally got it. Uh, but when I went through your catalogue and everybody's mm. like, no chance. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. British people just don't yeah. supply. We just those can't things. get those raw material, those huge range of colours. That's the thing. Mm. No spinner's going to make you know, a, a million different colours that they mm. are in Italy. Mm. But also, you know, the big, big companies like VBC, uh, they have got, some, you know, they've got a lot of. Uh, resources in order to perform and make these special cloths, which is yeah. fantastic. I mean, you know, they're, they're a really important part of ball growing. Again, we we're talking, we'll come later, later to about sharing industries in order to help people like us. Yeah. And really, we you know we're a small cog in the fashion world, but by them investing in wools and, uh, and farming and generally in Australia or other countries that, that, that make the wool product, it helps everyone else. Yeah. So it's all everyone needs to have their own little niche within the industry, but it's key that um, you know we keep our USP, which is a heavier 
yeah. from, well solid, you know, sort of Aston Martin. Well, we, we, are, sort of Ferrari, we are, we are, aren't we? Know, and, and the thing is, we never pretend to be, yeah. you know, I, I look at other tailors and I look at other cloths and I look how the things yeah. that people, and it's all very admirable and it's brilliant, yeah, but, yeah. but we That's know good. what we know we and we kind of stick to it. So there's an obvious thing, you, you've got the British take on cloth and clothing to a certain degree. Just Just a very simple one for people watching. Yeah. Um, they obviously perceive how big a part of a suit or a coat the cloth is for obvious sure. reasons. Yeah. And the perception I know when I speak to people is mm. that we every time we show somebody a cloth, we know the mill. Okay. Sure. We know the mill, which isn't the case. So you have mills that produce cloth, and you have merchants which. Harrison's of Edinburgh is and the good thing about being here is they have a relationship with mills and probably have a long relationships yeah and and long probably long have a better it's probably more useful for you watching because if you ask me about tailoring I'm going to tell you that Red may make the best suits in the world what a surprise if you go to a mill they're going to tell you the same because that's what they do that's what they do they produce fabulous cloth and it's their cloth done that way the difference of talking to a merchant is, I don't know how many mills you know, but you'll know a few. Well, the key thing for us is, is they know how we work and we know what we want from them. Yeah. Because most of the cloths they hear are pretty much bespoke to us. Yeah. So even though they run a quality, we might say, well, look, for us, it's not set enough. We want to change this. We want to do that to it. Yeah. So it becomes our own particular product, unique to us. Because obviously, we don't want other competitors having the same quality and those things are really key when merchant. If you're investing in all that stock and the bunches and everything else, which yeah. is big, yeah. um, you need to have the security, you're going to sell it. Yeah. And, but also the security, you're going to have the product. When you give it to customers, you don't get any problems with it. They're happy with it. Yeah. It, it, it makes life for everyone well, easy. Well, it, it's nice. So we can, uh, as a tailor, this is what clients want. Um, obviously, they want good cloth. They want good service all the way through. But one of the things that they want is choice. Everybody wants choice. Mm. And the, there's always, a, you know, what's different, what's new, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if we as tailors were to be super Puritans and say, well, I, I deal with my own mills, mm. we, we, our minimum purchases would be like, a you know, link. great big bolts of cloth, oh, yeah. would which be, yeah. would cost us a fortune. Yours probably and, something like that. And it's just not manageable to give the choice. It's just not manageable. So thankfully, we have Mr. Dunsford here. Thankfully, yeah. Who empties his piggy bank, cool. buys all of this cloth, a lot. all of it, yeah. puts it in pretty bunches so that you can have the <laughs> choice. That is what a merchant is. So a, a merchant is hugely important. It's how the trade works. I mean, I don't well, yeah, deal yeah. with, I mean, I, I've yeah. dealt with the odd mill for, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. but merchants are our business, basically. Yeah. Um, there there so have been many merchants, I'm sorry, there many mills that have tried making cut length business as well, but yeah. they tend to struggle with it a little bit, just because of the small range, yeah. they don't give the service. You know, we have an office in London where my son works, with Toby and guys up there, they look after the guys day to day for yeah. a piece pattern or a length or 10 centimetres yeah. for an extra collar. I mean, the mill's not going to get involved too much. No, in they're not. So it's, it's so it's very service, specialised. So. Um, it's integral. It's, it's yeah. you know, if we don't have it, we don't have a business. Some of these things, these lums got on bell jacketings, you know. Yeah, so I mean, we spin that to a sort of softer count there, lighter, you know, thicker, that's coarser count. fabulous, isn't it? So, Mark, we understand. We've known one another a long time. It was Leah sure. Brown in Dunsford. I've seen the changes over the year, and, uh, and I know so much about it. Sure. But would you yeah, yeah. mind just letting us know exactly what the, what's caused this transformation? <laughs> in the yeah, I mean, uh, going back to the Pedersen Becker one, which is the first one. I, I touched on that earlier. The, I suppose the next thing was we could see by maybe acquiring other companies we could 
grab market share, if you want to call it in other words, or, or get more business through the door by actually, rather than doing it ourselves under LBD, using another company name or a name that was, yeah, was old familiar. Or, or familiar to the customers. So um, 1999, I think it was, um, Cameron Buchanan was the owner of a company called Harrison's Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Cameron, again, we've always been quite friendly with our competitors. Uh, knew my uncle quite well. He it's was like here before me. Yeah. Like um, could you perhaps look at maybe buying the tweed side of it, which is the Port and Harding bunch, yeah. which is, you know, this, this is the hard name. twist bunch. <coughs> so ah. that was obviously a brand name that was in need of some sort of re uh, rescuing in some ways, because the stock was pretty li minimal at the time because Cameron wasn't buying more stock. But had a great name in, in Savile Row, great name in the city um, for tweeds. So it gave us tweeds straight away, which was a new thing for us. Mm. So straight away, we went down to the little mill uh, in the borders, started buying up new stock to replenish the bunches. And then over time, we brought in new qualities, the Glen Royal Bunch, also yeah. Crowley's 12. I mean, this has always been our go-to. Yeah, this has been I mean, it's hard to assist just. I mean, you know, yeah. people talk about tweeds sometimes, but, you know, for me, this is what tweed's all about really it's it's got to be a tweed that's you can take out hunting and shooting fishing yeah. and that kind of this is what hard twist is all about uh, and all the port and harding range is all about outdoor pursuits yeah whatever they are real deal the real deal i mean this thing is you know, some people put lambsall in it and i just think lambsall in a tweed it's, it's not a tweed yeah it's and it's got to be made in scotland it? too which is another key so that was the key then we started working quite closely with <coughs> harrison's because the camera was still going on with the company but we would manage to use some of our ranges through his uh, operation in, in Edinburgh at the time. But eventually he said, look, why don't I just come and work for you guys? I'll continue to move my selling across Europe, you buy the company, and that's basically what we did. We, we took yeah. on the whole lock, stock and barrel. This then changed a lot for us because that internationally now, we were got a name that we could use to sell to the Far East, smell to America and other parts of yeah. Europe, which we weren't really Quite touching at the time. Yeah. yeah, it was a big game changer. We knew it would be. So we threw uh, a lot of things and, and money in getting that into all sorts of places. Um, Premier Crew was really trying to imitate our good friends, Mr. Lester and Son. In this, yeah. in the, and um, everyone will know this, this uh, 10, 11 ounce is very similar close cloth to Lester's 11, 12, which was to be our sort of next acquisition, really. Um, so Harrison became established um, we had new agents starting working for us in America in the Far East and it's sort of started to take take off yeah so we thought well if something else was to come along that ticked our boxes then we might be given a go mm. and we were very friendly with David Graham at Smith Woolens yeah but David didn't want to sell at that time so I think it was Christmas 2011 I had a phone call from Henry Lesser out of the blue could we meet for a chat Henry wasn't the most outgoing sort of person. Not a chap. I mean, David, I remember yeah, you, you talk about you know, Smith and the whole, yeah, the whole character. premises. David, David was a lovely chap, you know, <coughs> and Henry was Henry. And um, could you come? So we said, we said, well, we can come up next week. I think it was the week before Christmas. I think literally the week before Christmas. They were not looking to go on much before the new year. Uh, so right. uh, they said, look, would you be prepared to take on the company? Yeah. Um, we said obviously we can have a look at it and uh, we spoke to some of the suppliers they're happy to supply us and we made arrangement before christmas yeah. and in paper before the end of the year and we came and bought all the stock down in a new part of 2012. simple as that relationship in this <coughs> trade i mean I, it's hard to explain to perhaps your end customer but customers like i know you for a long time i know my suppliers a long time yeah. even our competitors you know yeah. the most part we all get on quite well. We, you know, we've all got our little niche. Yeah, and it's a very small thing. It's the it's same a very as small ours. Thing. We, we So what about this grand old name, Smith? I mean, yeah, I, I used to uh, love getting I mean, sent over to that little yeah. basement. Well, it was in Soho. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a, <laughs> it was a little cave down there, wasn't it? Um, again, this was quite interesting because Smith had W Bill. So yeah. the two another, together. Another place another great under the name. ground. David, what a lovely, lovely chap. Um, he wanted to retire. These businesses are quite hard to sell if you haven't got family coming up behind. And you need to know what you're doing with them. And you need to know what you do because buying cloth is, is takes a little bit of a skill and you don't want to get it wrong because it's big money. So 
David was keen to sell and 2014 we took that on as well. So, and then we've rebranded W Bill since. For the things about investing in cloth, you've got to do it properly. Yeah, absolutely. There's no point us spending all this money on these lovely new names and say, do you know what? We'll buy it in a, in a, in a, in a back street in China or... Well, you have done it properly. Point? I mean, you know. I'm walking around here and everything's yeah. woven in England and Scotland. Yeah. And well, fabulous. Well, we'll have a look at some okay. of the cloths and we'll yeah. do it from there. Great. So what I'm going to do, Mark, um, I want to tell you my favourite bunches. Good. You can tell me if I'm just being selfish or is the good reason for it, okay? Okay, So test me. We, we sell a lot of things, um, sports coats, classic suits, etc. We touched on it before, mm -hmm. Porter and Harden if you want proper tweed, because sure. we do a lot of the shooting gear for people. Outdoor pursuits, so can't I, go wrong. I, I, I almost, you don't need to explain it to me. I know why we pick this, because it's the real deal, Yeah. okay? Um, a massive one, which is kind of quite easy to explain, is Glorious 12th. So Glorious 12th to me, and you can add, you get those, I mean, there are designs in here like my father used to wear, so but they were always made out of tweeds. Yeah. But it's wearable, it's 11 ounce. So this must be running for about 20 years, this cloth, this quality. Hasn't changed supply, it's all been the same from the day we first started it. Obviously, over time, tastes change, so yeah. every edition, the patterns are somewhat different, but there are hardcore in there that have been there since day one, like that one, for example, yeah. and the other one you made, that green one you mentioned, which is another sort of copy of the old traditional Hartwist designs, but in a Glorious 12 quality. But it has become one of the, you know, the bunches in our collection. Yeah. That everyone knows it's very popular with us because the thing is these designs you can go to the website and look at them yep. Yep. <coughs> they make some can be <coughs> excuse me quite formalish definitely yeah that's but the a little idea. bit different that's the idea but formalish they yeah. make fabulous suits but a lot of people will split these and wear the coat separately which yep. is yeah i mean just for that for example i'm just pulling one out here but sure. that to me would make a fabulous suit yeah but then you could pull that on with a white shirt and a pair of jeans Absolutely. and and yeah, couldn't yeah. be nicer so it's, it's sort of making contemporary obviously the tweed part of it is essential to keep the core essence of glorious 12 what it is but i mean designs like this new edition which is just really released are yeah. slightly more contemporary in certain places yeah but keeping the essence of it being i mean tweed for in the us for example which is a big part of our trade yeah um people love tweed of course mm. they do and we all do mm. sure, sure but if you live e even in boston or somewhere yeah. it gets really hot of course doesn't of course. it so that's why these fellas it's are a great really great it's a great way yeah for because sort of, the know. tweeds are a love affair but that's definitely kind of winter, winter. Yeah. that's more of a three season <coughs> so a good one yeah. for obvious reasons Gordon Hardy. um this is he's gonna hate me for this I really like this moonbeam. And I'm very sophisticated when I explain it to clients. Go on, let's hear it. Poor man's cashmere. I would say you're not far off there, to be honest, yeah. It's, it's the softness of it. I'm a tailor and this feels like cashmere. I mean, it just feels like cashmere. People are blown away by how well it performs, how super soft it is, and reasonably priced, you know. We don't have to break the bank. Maybe we should put Going the for up a bit more, maybe. Well, maybe we'll, we'll we'll get any encouragement. The, Te yeah. Tell us about it. I know it's got, isn't well, it? Well, it's got it's got a composition of lambswool and angora little bunnies. Yeah. Um, that are very well looked after. I made. Oh, of very course. Very important point because the, <laughs> these things are valuable. Yeah. So all the sheep we use and all the all the animals that involve making cloth, not just for us, other merchants, are looked after extremely well because yeah. they are valuable assets. Yeah. Um, so it's a mixture of the two <coughs> of those two together, trying to keep some strength. Because the angora on its own is quite a different cloth, uh, too soft just on its is own. Is it the angora or the, the angora. lambs? Well, well, what's the what's given it the real? What, what's the poor it's man's? The angora. It, yeah. No question about it. Because those bunnies are so soft. The fibre from it is so soft yeah. that that creates that sort of handle that you look for um, when you're trying to sort of get your ha hands into the cloth. It's why it feels so soft and luxurious. Yeah, that's where the cloth comes. It's and this, comes from. this has been about a bit, hasn't it? It's been, been around at least over fifteen years, possibly. Yeah, yeah, it's been around a bit. I mean, yeah, bunches that have been around over more than ten years tend to be successful because we keep bringing them back. Yeah. When new well, like we touched on before, you've got all yeah. of this here. Yeah, and you don't want it sitting on the shelves, no, do you? Not really. Uh, well, look, 
for good reason. Uh, fantastic. It's, it's also a lot of people actually buying that for not just for jackets, but also for dressing gowns and oh, sort of right. grapes okay. and that sort of thing. Yeah, I've actually had, a, I've actually got one. Funny enough, oh. um, lovely to wear. Just a side issue. How elegant. Around the house from this episode. Um, w Bill. Yep. Classic Shetland made in Scotland. Very, very different. W Bill is always the. That's the tweed. It's, it always has been it's for the trade, been a it? tweed uh, house in uh, a little eclectic, may I say, over the years. We tried to bring a little bit more stream online. Um, for me, that is the W Bill look right there. Yeah. It's this, this is what I'm wearing to actually the Shetland. It's just a lovely, soft, even though it's quite a raspy kind of Shetland leaf handle, it's still a lovely, quite warm and comforting yeah. cloth to wear. Do you know, um, I'm, I'm sure. We won't upset anybody, but you can maybe. Sure. When I was at Andersons, we yeah. used to have all you these. Did. The, oh, bolts we did. We had all these the bolts, bolts on the tables, and yeah. I'm sure these type of things look very familiar. Yeah, they, they probably were. They probably were through Smiths, possibly. Yeah, I've been would going have forever. So, been going for, going yeah. for, for, for WB. I mean, just classic stuff. I mean, I remember. I don't even know if he's still alive. Was it Ray that used to be in the? Ray every time away, I used yeah, to go I down, he yeah, used yeah, to say, yeah. "What's the weather like up yeah, there?" Yeah, Ray. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, classic. Now then, go to suiting. Yeah. There's a lot from all of the merchants. There's Very a lot much. of good classic stuff much produced. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, these lessers kind of stick in my mind a little bit. Well, um, yeah. I certainly think from my Anderson days. Definitely, yeah. This was probably the one. It's still the number one, one of our number one bunches, really. Yeah. In the top. So you get you get used to things, but yeah. it's nice to be here just to be kind of to, to refresh myself. Why mm. I suggest these cloths. The, do you know what I like straight away, which is a bit of a weird one? Even the packaging of this, H. Lesser, lightweight, fine worsted suitings. Think about it. Lightweight. It was. 11, 12 ounces. It was at the time, yeah. That's British lightweight. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely, yeah. I love how you've not changed that. Well, I mean, why would we want to change something that was working so well for so long? The months after we'd taken the stock of lessers, everyone was saying, oh, you've changed everything, it's all changed. Yeah. I said, well, right, we've just bought the stock from the same people that get the cloth made, Yeah, but it's well, different. You said earlier, but it's sort of when you when you got involved with lessers, yeah. before you uh, took over the, yeah. the brand, sure. the company, the first thing you had to do was speak to all the suppliers, yeah. which are the mills, the people Absolutely. who weave these cloths, because yeah. if you don't have them, then you don't have a brand. Change always brings about different conclusions. I mean, the, the internet is a wonderful thing. You're enjoying it now. Um, but all sorts of things can be said. And like I say, when it's out there, yeah. what I will say is I've known Mark, I've known this company all of my working life. And they obviously bought took over under their umbrella these new brands yeah but i can assure you they are the same because of what you've heard my first and foremost thing is how do things lay up on the cutting board uh it yeah. always lays up really well yeah um and clients love it it's the sort of thing they come back yeah. after 15 years and go absolutely. that's my favorite suit can I have another absolutely so that's lessers yeah. this is the daddy of the collection of the lessers it obviously has i mean this is still phenomenal um, but yeah, Lum's Golden Bell is a bit special. Yeah. So I will give you my little take on it. I always say to clients, this isn't advertised as a Super 180s or whatever, uh, or any fancy numbers or glamour. I always say the reason why this is so good is the yarn. I almost say it's like organic, probably the wrong terminology, but what I mean by that is organic food tastes better and this in its yarn mm. um, without all the fancy weaving technique just seems to be better and it's something that clients turn yeah. around we had a brilliant example on, on a trip mm. recently that said you know I don't know what this blue worsted is mm. but it it's just mind-blowing mm. back in the 60s and 70s cloth of the finest count at the time was an 18.5 micron right that was deemed like this lightweight you know that was uh, sort of uh, as far as the advance that they got in speed in spinning techniques people were allowed to join the super hundreds club and they were the merchants like lessers and harrisons wayne shield holland show a few other people yeah, a few other other names but as sort of the 90s came along there was this sort of race to get 
uh, the numbers from 120s to 130s to 140s, 150s, well, up to 180s, up to 200s. Just explain, you know, as these numbers increase. Well, so obviously, the, you know, again, <coughs> it comes back to the raw material, which was the sheep themselves. You know, the uh, the farmers, the wool growers in Australia, could see those sheep producing a good revenue from yeah. fine count wools. So they developed. Um, the sheep or engineer the sheep to produce lighter microns. Right. So 80.5 80 micron was designated to super hundreds. Yeah. When you get up to, like, we've got a new 160s quality, which is a 13.5, sorry, 15.5 micron super 160s, um, the finer you go and the finer the micron, obviously, the, the finer you can spin it. Yeah. Everything becomes lighter. But the beauty with Lums Gone Bell is it's always been a super hundreds. Yeah. but the best super hundreds you can possibly get yeah. because all, all those clips at the end of the growing season taken off the sheep are hand individually selected uh, I, right. the well, that's I use is isn't it? if you buy <coughs> you went to Tesco and you bought a load of strawberries and even punnets and you took each best strawberry out of each of those punnets and put it in a pot you had the best of everything mm. and that's what Lums Golden Bell is on that clip 18.5 yeah. micron it's kind of a Rolls Royce of super yeah. hundreds, really. So I've not been talking nonsense for 30 years. I mean, then. people love it. What it's you've got out. here, obviously, in this cloth, is you've actually got one 18.5 micron throughout, OK? But we've actually made it in four different ways. So you've made it in a plain weave yeah. in the 70s twos count, which is a finer count yarn spun. Yeah. And then you've got it in the uh, 54s twos count, which is like coarser spun, makes it into 13 ounce. And then you've also got it in the flannel quality where we've sort of not spun it quite so thick, but then we obviously mashed it up to get yeah. the yarn to produce a lovely soft flannel. So it's, it's spinning it is also a key part in making a cloth and giving it other designs within the same bunch. Yeah. I, I know your mills are all secretly hidden away. Yeah, this is one we actually is bought. This is actually one we bought during COVID, actually. All oh, right. Um, is, is this it used to be no, no, It used to be owned uh, by <coughs> the... Teddy Lum started it, so the Bullman Lum Group oh, owned right. it. Um, Lessers were one of the companies that were allowed to buy Lums Golden Bale, given the license to buy it. I love one. that. You're allowed to buy a red yeah. main suit. Yeah. You have the license. You're allowed to buy it. There were other merchants before that, but we had rights to have this cloth made by another company in Yorkshire. We acquired the company Lums Golden Bale and all the rights to go with it. So any Lums Golden Bale that is, doesn't come from us isn't Lums Golden Bale. Period has to come through our channel, has to come through our special manufacturing unit. Cool. We make it ourselves now, which is well, it really works. Annoying. I mean, I and there are lots of new things <coughs> to, come, to come down the line with that in the next couple of years. Mm. Exciting stuff. If yeah. you're a cloth lover, which we are, you've got classic worsteds here. Yeah. Yep. Um, is this is this quite a small percentage? Literally because Again, of the luxury you, of it, or uh, do you think? I think you've got a hardcore customer who appreciates certain cloths yeah this is one of them there's other ones within our range Glorious 12 is another one that the the brand name you know spring ram is another favorite yeah. seen customers that love to wear those particular cloths yeah um and i think new people coming to the to the business that will have a suit made you know if mm -hmm. the sales guys or the company owns the business says look try this if you want to have a classic suit yeah par excellence that's the one to go for obviously. when you make clothing for people it's always difficult because yeah. you're, you're not just trying to fit clothing you're trying to fit people's mind and people have expectations yeah. and yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah. of things yeah. and yeah. it's never easy and as i say my the, going back to the selfishness i'm a bit like if we get the cloth right then i've got a couple of yeah. steps up the ladder basically yeah, yeah. nice uh, i just um, want Mr. Dunsford to explain because I love this. The famous this Solaro. is very glamorous stuff called Solaro. Okay, um, the original Solaro, the only Solaro. And we we make a little bit of it. Funny enough, I used to make mm. quite a bit of it in the nineties. Yeah. I, I don't okay, know yeah, if yeah. it was a thing. I don't know. Um, it's funny because <coughs> when we first got it here in the building, we took Smith on in two thousand and fourteen. I think it was. Yeah, I mean, we had people say, "What the hell is this red?" I wouldn't say the other word, doing the building because it was quite unusual. I mean, it's a two-tone effect. Um, the red warp, is gives it that stood, and then the, obviously the khaki weft make this sort of iridescent look to it. Yeah. But it's very hard to sell this cloth apart from uh, Italy and sort of, sort of east. After right. that, you know, from Italy, 
west it sort of doesn't have a lot of following it's interesting but it's though, very it? very but the thing Italy it's italian and east. It's, it's funny it's just love it yeah the original solaro the only solaro is it's a licensed trade name it belongs right. to us oh there you are it's ours if it's not solaro from smith it's just this is not solaro and there you're learning go. a lot So look, spring ram, all made in Yorkshire. Right. So the fleece comes off the sheep in Yorkshire farm, gets down to the spinning shed, gets spun. Yeah. Gets woven in Yorkshire, gets finished in Yorkshire, get the product all within about 25 miles radius. Right, okay, well that's important. And the thing with it obviously is, this is British wool, which is used to weather like today, wind and rain and cold and damp. You know, yeah. this stuff is made to repel bad weather yeah. And, and last in, in tough conditions, and that's what Spin Perfect. Ram's about. It's just one under our umbrella that is unique to us. Yeah. We've actually introduced a new Spring Ram coating now as well, which is a whip cord um, using the same yarn. I um, mean, it's, it's got a... F it just it for the resistance. It feels durable. It yeah. feels yeah. it. Pretty porous. It's just great stuff, yeah. I mean, um, I, I think the people who know it, they do yeah. love it. I just, you know, it's just spreading the word, really, that... Even with British wool, which is pretty much good for carpets, actually you can make it into a <coughs> cloth. Yeah, I mean that's, and it's all made. That adds a bit more magic to it. And, and it's all made within a small radius. I mean, you know, the footprint. If you were looking at sustainability and uh, keeping, you know, uh, good things for the planet, that's, that's yeah. not a bad. Well, that's perfect. You have um, Finn Moresco with Finn Moresco is the Smith Woolens. Yeah, but that's an engineered. Uh, I can't use the word F R E S C O. Yeah. Right? Um, which is obviously, you could call it the benchmark fresco. Yeah. You know, dear, our dear friends at um, Huddersfield Farm Worsteds. But in terms of a natural fresco type cloth, yeah, this is going to be this, hard. To we sell a lot of frescoes. Yeah. And we do quite a bit of fin morescos because I yeah. always prefer fin moresco because it has a nicer handle. Slightly less rough. Exactly. I, I was always told years and years ago in the trade the reason yep. why we had the uh, southern hemisphere sheep mm -hmm. was they lived a good life they lived a good Sunshine. life and it was softer and our sheep nice their their, their cool. fleece was designed for the oh, carpet to be trod on all it is is carpet really so you have to blend a little bit of the british wool with the cross cross wool on it as well but to get this particular product it actually repels all sorts even wine if it's thrown at you it will it yeah. repel that and washed it's tough as old boots but it's absolutely brilliant to I wear. mean what weight's this one that's 12 13 I believe yeah yeah so it's a little and heavier it's pretty sophisticated it's got a nice yeah. handle to it yeah. isn't it yeah so um but if you want to this is actually two ply whereas other frescoes tend to be three ply because right. it's just it's so naturally uh resistant and so springy but we just help people out and say when the two ply the three ply ply two two yards twisted together in the warp and in the weft and a lot of other ones tend to have two coarse spun and an additional third thread in one yarn yeah. to make the good, to make, to make the cloth itself. This is actually two ply. If you imagine on a full piece of cloth, every time you add another yeah, yarn string, you're going to add more weight. So to try and keep the weight within some kind of reasonable um, sort of parameter, really, we need to try and do two ply for these. The three ply version is available on this one, but it does bring the weight up to about 16 ounces. Right, which, which is, is meaty, isn't it, for a yeah. breathable? I mean, yeah. I've had the pleasure of wearing Fresco and Fin Moresco. The Fin Moresco, I will say, Feels a little bit softer. Tiny bit, yeah. What, why is that? Do we know? Uh, well, it's a bit more know? engineered. I think the, tr the the true fresco is a 23, 24 micron. So it's quite a coarse right. yarn. Um, but, I mean, it performs brilliantly. It's fantastic, yeah. 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 I mean, it is the sort of, the, you don't say the benchmark, but it is it's definitely one yeah. that everyone knows very well. well. Certainly, well, it's certainly the respect it's yeah. gained, doesn't it? bits and pieces but I mean just a few things of this year obviously our 160th uh, year for Harrison's just coming to an end so there's a couple of things that we've done to sort of finish that year off with this is one cashmere quality a woolen spun cashmere the difference between a woolen spun I mean I haven't seen spun. this no this, this is, is it's, it's got a pretty sort of lovely a finale um, and sort of to mark that is a couple of special designs one of which is this Andrew Carnegie check which yeah. was made for Andrew Carnegie 
early start of the 19th century. Actually, I've actually got one of the old ledgers here. Um, in fact, there's his, there's his pattern right there. Look, God. Carnegie check, 10 and a half yards. He had two qualities. He had a winter weight and a summer weight. And that, <laughs> this, as you believe it or not, is I think the summer weight. <laughs> yeah, we can see how heavy that was. It feels about 18 about hours. 120 years old. Um, uh, oh, that was the winter weight. That was the summer weight. But I mean, this is how heavy that is. Yeah. How soft it is, though. Yeah, it's fabulous. that's not even cashmere. That's just just that's just normally just soft wool that's been probably been boiled a bit. Right. So to replicate that, we've we've done a, a, a version of that for uh, him. But there's a lot of other patterns as well. We've from our old estate uh, business that Harrison's used to have. This is some of the such tweeds. a gorgeous design. Um, yeah, and it's the handle. Uh, believe we me, we just you, you love woolen spun cashmere. You know, Harrison's was very famous for it in the sort of sixties and seventies. We we what was was where we were at was was cashmere, pure cashmere. That There's is a small collection of those, <coughs> um, which That's are pretty special, out on bunches. It? I think a go bunch has just been going out literally um, just before Christmas. So the, the New Year have one of those. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people that <laughs> know us from old. I'm, know I, this. I'm smiling to myself because if you get involved in this trade, you don't make a lot of money. Okay. But you do get a lot of enjoyment and to see something yeah. like this which has been around for a long time it's been it reinvented yeah. and you know i'm always thinking i wish I, I wish we had more tailors i wish we could do more but i would love something mm. in this just because where just the aware. hell do yeah. you find something yeah. Yeah. Would you have made up into that class? well would you have a sports coat well, do you know something? It would make a stunning sports coat, of course it would. It would make a brilliant suit. But it would also make a really nice kind of three-quarter length mm. top coat, wouldn't mm. it? Light. Yeah. Yep. You know, a nice half belt, patch pockets. I mean, the Definitely. it's just so refreshing. These guys... Um, it's a handful of really key suppliers that we can work with. <coughs> you know. I mean, obviously this is made in Scotland as well, which is key for the heritage. The whole, the whole idea was it to have it a Scottish cashmere like we yeah. used to have in the good old days. It's wonderful. It's, it's, it's the body in it. Yeah. It's the it's the softness, but you know there's body in there, and you know mm. it's not going to pill mm. in five minutes mm. and you know deteriorate. Uh, absolutely fabulous. So that goes from sort of one extreme in terms of yarn count and, and that kind of cashmere fibre, as it goes right down to this is our sort of again. So celebrate the one sixtieth year, our super one sixties. You know, <coughs> that's is where yarn spinning has come come two if you like over the years from the history we just showed that book there of the old yarn and this is the yeah. sort of modern day i mean that is i don't know i don't know how this comes across the hand but this is just class yeah. that's all there is to it and it's a it's a very simple terminology to use but you just can't go wrong no. this is absolutely gorgeous again isn't twofold it? warp twofold weft it's solid in but it has got the handle in it you know and softness in it without losing the you know performance it's yeah. all there well the thing is it'll marry itself nicely to a suit that's going to yeah. last you 20 years absolutely isn't it? absolutely so yeah those are the sort of extremes if you like from one talking about cloth from that size down to something yeah. as small as this fantastic But I mean, in terms of the suit, I don't know where you feel about where the suits yeah. is now. I mean, obviously, post-COVID, it's a different Well, there's, there's, there is. Post-COVID is something that was a very unex you know, unpleasant yeah. experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, we weathered very well. And, mm. and I think part of the reason for that is um, people look forward to yeah better times sure and i think that's what some of the purchasing was when we were, we were like you know we're going to come out of this and everything but i think there's definitely a change and um mm. and what i will say is um there's the sports coats mm. there's i think people are perhaps enjoying nice clothing a lot more so they might not be wearing a blue suit gray suit mm. for work no but they 
always enjoy the experience of making something and that's where these sort of things come in to just bring yeah. Rhea yeah, huge delight and and you could put that to another thing which I heard um, well we probably all heard it on the news they said mm. people after post Covid are spending less money on things but more money on the experience mm. and the good thing about tailoring is it's the experience mm. that actually most people Absolutely, fall yeah. in love once with. Once you've had it once But twice, they get a you, wonderful yeah. Yeah. thing at the end of it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's it. People come and spend a lot of time and they enjoy mm. the journey more. Yeah. What I always well, it's say... Thanks to people like yourself, really. I mean, you know, you know the trade and, and, and have passion about the trade and have got people involved in the trade, even the youth coming through at your place, your new yeah. apprentices. That is a good feeling to have when you go into a shop, maybe for the first time, having a suit made. Yeah. I mean, it must be, I know I have suits made myself, it's great, it's a lovely yeah. experience. It's still exciting, and you isn't won't want to go back to yeah. the old experience, be like. I think we'll always be here, because I was told yeah. times in the 80s, oh, I was was told no when hope for us all, yeah, never gonna make it, we're right? all doomed, it's yeah. never happened. Yeah. Uh, if it's all part of a bigger picture, yeah. And really fine tailoring still in the yeah. middle of it. Well, we have to be here for a few more years yet. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, look, Mark, thank you again, uh, especially coming in at Christmas time. Uh, uh, it's the only break. time we get the chance. They're yeah. busy here. We're flat out. You know we are. Uh, so to open up on a Christmas holiday is is really special. And yep. thanks for the thirty years of friendship. Thank and you too. Supply. Yeah, it's been great. And, uh, Can't make good work. Good luck next year. Years to and a few go. ways to go. Thanks, thank Tom. you. Cheers.